시청자 여러분 안녕하세요. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings. Did you enjoy Korean Thanksgiving? With cooler weather, p r o s e d o n t i c s on Friday Live has returned. Today, we're going to look at the different steps of implanted p r o s e d o n t i c treatment and address its side effects. Today, we have with us Professor Park j i m a n of p r o s e d o n t i c Division of Seoul National University Graduate School. I understand that you're really busy. Thank you for coming to p r o s e d o n t i c s on Friday. Before we begin, can you briefly explain your lecture? Today, digital dentistry is becoming more widespread and a lot of people are interested in this topic. The digital prosthesis, the height of crown and occlusal issues erupt and I would like to talk about traditional principles about utilizing these digital dentistry. This is about digital dentistry of which a lot of people are interested so I look forward to your lecture. Those of you watching the program from then on site, you can participate real time via the chat screen. Leave your questions, have your answers, and with lucky draw, you'll be able to win Starbucks coffee coupons. Those of you who have been chosen as best questions will be sent at three Starbucks coffee coupons. Learn about bite registration in digital dentistry and win your Starbucks coupons. I look forward to your keen interest and let us begin Professor Park Jiman's lecture. Greetings, I'm Professor Park Jiman from Seoul National University. Today I'm going to talk about accurate occlusion for digital prosthesis. I'm sure you are used to articulator. This is virtual articulator. We can apply movements so that lateral force is not applied to implanted prosthesis. To give you a tip, if you make oral scan, the color map It shows the distance between upper and lower. If you mark occlusal contact points as shown below and scan it, it is shown in color. And if you use that on the color map, accurate occlusion can be registered. Lateral force is very important in order to prevent it. If you look at on the virtual articulator, there's collision mechanism. As the upper and lower move, It registers the collision and can reflect the canine guidance as well as group function. Depending on that, we need to make sure that lateral force is not applied. Easiest way to approach oral scanning is using implant. The occlusion without lateral force is very important implant prosthesis. Facebook transfer is very important. When you do mounting on the software, you can adjust the occlusal plane. There is a green plate. You can adjust it following that. On the virtual articulator, mounting can be done as set. Another traditional method is to use the articulator and mount it. The position is reflected onto the computer. There are five contents that I want to discuss today and I will go each in detail. As you know, articulator is a mechanical device that replicates the lower movement and Facebook transfer is used for the upper and CR records are used for the mandible. Articulator is here. Movements are made to replicate arch movement as shown on the textbook. The occlusal pattern changes in the non-adjustable articulator. It is known that articulator that is the similar size as a person's oral cavity limits the movement of the lower.
The reason why we use articulator is because, as shown on the left, if the occlusion is completely collapsed, we mount the CR and replicate the jaw movement. This is reflected on the virtual articulator. Wax up is done, and we come up with a blueprint for treatment. Provisional and different prep guides can be fabricated. Face bow transfer. It's very important in terms of position of the upper. If there's a lot of CO stop, the patient can bite consistently. It's okay, but if in the case of patient with collapsed occlusion, if there's not that many stop due to attrition or due to a habitual bite or dual bite, we need to register bite properly. As shown in the case of these patients, we need to use a Lucia's jig or other means to find the right bite. Lucia jig or leaf gauge is used to achieve posterior disclusion. If the posterior is closed, the patient returns to the bad position. We need to make the patient forget about that. We need to have the patient bite on cotton roll for 20-30 minutes to do mandibular deprogramming. And using Lucia jig, we need to find the right position with disclusion. After that, with the lower movement, the condyle angle, Bennett angle, can be confirmed, and you can check bite on the articulator, condyle angle, and Bennett angle can be set. Once this is done using this, Prosthesis can be designed on the interior side. Interior guidance table is used. Interior guidance table, which is customized, is used to transfer the interior guidance. Considering the aesthetic factors, we come up with blueprint for treatment using digital dentistry with facial scan data. Aesthetic standards can be found. At the clinic, the lower movement is recorded on the virtual articulator, movements of the patient. Facial scan and customized movement records are utilized. What is important is CO occlusion. No matter how you record the lower movement, reflect them in the CAD software. If CO is wrong, then this is meaningless. Trios is used for oral scanning. If you reduce the color map, you can see the position where it is in contact. It is shown in blue. An easy mistake to make is over here. This is checked. If you check this, the computer calculates and provides the optimum occlusion. I always turn it off. The occlusion needs to be what I've confirmed. If you turn it on, the occlusion can change. Even if you do oral scanning accurately, if you turn it on, it shifts. No matter how well you do oral scanning, if this is on, the occlusion can be wrong. I make sure that the computer does not make these calculations and I accurately take the lateral bite with the patient's CO reflected. Another recommendation is if you come across this kind of patient, how can you reproduce CR bite or CO on the oral scan? If we are able to reproduce this, we'd be able to provide a better prosthesis. I'd like to give you a tip. The patient's occlusion, the patient is using denture. In the upper, the patient is using RPD. Bite check is done accurately to get this kind of result. In the upper left, 
The occlusion seems a bit low. If you are unsure that byte has been accurately registered, you need to use shim stock. You need to check whether this is open byte here. If it is so, you can confirm that you have taken occlusion, that you have registered occlusion correctly. You need the data without the denture as well. If you look over here, from the clasp, metal frame and denture, they're all erased. This is so what you get, the teeth and the sealing of the mouth. These are unchanged. And then oral scanning is done once again. If you do this, this is occlusion without denture. The reason why I use TRIA scanner frequently is because even if you do additional scanning, the positional relation between upper and lower does not change and it is very advantageous. You can reproduce difficult occlusion like this in an easy manner. Implant can be planned by turning the denture on and off. When you scan a dentulous ridge, I recommend using these kind of appliances. Perhaps I'll have a chance to talk about them later. I'm going to talk about denture and occlusion at the end of my lecture. Utilizing the mandibular movement information. You can scan what is mounted on the articulator. This is the basic way to do it. Condyler angle, Bennett angle is set. You can utilize these. Acoustigma is available from Austin. You have the movement done following instruction. And once this is done, condyler angle is reflected. And on CAD software, you scan this and you input information. Following the set way, movement is made. There's motion recording where mandibular movement is recorded and the set value can be put on the articulator as well. For patients where you need to make occlusion due to collapsed occlusion, it is not meaningful to record the patient's occlusion. Therefore, you can just put in the set value and make movement. You can provide primary provisional using this. Once the patient adapts with the provisional and if the occlusion is improved, you can record the patient's movement and then make a final prosthesis. This is how it's done. This is recording the patient's movement. If you use this, if you limit the patient's movement, you can gain this information on the CAD software, the opening and closing jaw movement, and lateral movement. In making final prosthesis, these movements need to be reflected. Digital dentistry can be utilized as shown. In utilizing it clinically, you can use an intraoral scanner, or on the right, you can use a jaw motion tracker. The intraoral scanner can be used for a partial quadrant arch, whereas the jaw motion tracker can be used for full arch cases. Trio scanner was introduced since 2017. It has functions where patient movements can be recorded. With advances in technology, these have become incorporated in the workflow. If you look over here, this is recorded and you can see the patient's movement like this. You can get good prosthesis using these data. You put the scanner and you have the patient move sideways and the movement is recorded. And on the cat, it's shown like this. 
Restorations are made, removing interferences that are shown. We can make prosthesis as we make adjustments. The downside is that if there is bracket, it's not possible. This is a contraindication. A study was made when I was in Yonsei University, and these were actually of help. Tracker, it's for full arch cases instead of quadrant case. The downside is that when you attach the appliance, the lower appliance is a bit exposed. It's difficult for deep pipe cases, and the appliance can be a bit difficult, but otherwise, it's very good. Bite is registered using digital dentistry. The center one is CR. If you gather all these data and provide provisional, the patient would be able to have a more stable CR. And if you gather all the scan data here, you can gather data like this virtually. Finally, it is facial scanner. These days, a lot of people use a facial scan data. There are different scanners available. It's easy to scan. You can scan using your smartphone. If you use the jig, the oral scan data, facial scan data can be used using precise positional relations. When you do prosthesis, you can check the profile and lip support of the patient. Ultimately, we can get all the data within the treatment room and send it to the design center. We can make a virtual patient in this way and come up with a treatment plan. If you look over here, at initial visit, you gather these data and come up with a virtual patient and use it when you talk treatment plans with your patient. Can I ask you a question? The facial scan and mandibular movement records. If you use these to come up with a virtual patient, what is the biggest benefit in using a virtual patient clinically? When we provide aesthetic treatment, we talk with the patient rather than just providing a model wax up because this cannot be changed and the patient will not be able to see what kind of differences the treatment will result in. But if you use a virtual patient, you'll be able to show the blueprints of your treatment plan. You can make alterations and see the result of treatment. So patient acceptance and consent goes up drastically. The patient will be able to see the prosthesis as well as the changed profile. In doing prosthodontic treatment, I believe using virtual patient will help in reducing patient complaints about the end result. I think this is a great system. Thank you for your answer. A lot of questions and comments are made by the viewers. We will entertain a couple of questions before carrying on with your lecture. Pretty Sky, I look forward to your lecture. TS, I have a question. I think this is a basic question. I look forward to your lecture. I want to ask you a question ahead. How can I do scanning on scan coping and proximal surface nicely? I'm a novice in digital dentistry. I think this is a question about scanning technique. Yes, it's a very practical question. From the top, the scan coping looks like a lone island, circular. From tooth to scan coping, it is recognized as separately. At times, because of shiny surface, a scanning is not done properly. In order to do scanning properly, you need to tilt it buccally or lingually. And in that way, you need to scan it so that the side of the scan body can be registered. There's another point in doing scanning on proximal surface. If this is the dentition, 
we scan like this, but if you upright in 90 degrees and rotate the scanner like this, you can easily scan the proximal surface. By doing rotation, scanning can be done better. Thank you. ID Yong Yong. For convenience, can I register MICP and on semi adjustable articulator? Can I set arbitrary condyle and arbitrary anterior occlusion? Yes, it's a good question. I talked about how setting arbitrary mounting is important. After you do scanning, there is a menu to set the occlusal plane. If you set in an arbitrary manner, arbitrary mounting is done in virtual articulator. The average value of condal is set 30 degrees, 15 degrees. By doing this, you'll be able to proceed as you do in the conventional way. You'll be able to reduce error more. Let's look below. Hongung prosthesis. Is there a occlusal analysis appliance that you prefer for precise occlusal registration? There are different advantages and disadvantages for different occlusion devices. For accurate occlusion registration, rather than device, it is about how accurate scanning you get with oral scanner. Before getting occlusion, you need to make sure that there's a no distortions with upper and lower in order to get correct occlusion. When I use oral scanner to scan a full arch, how can I get no distortions, efficient and precise scan? That is the kind of mindset you need to have. That being said, when you scan bite from the lateral side, you need to get uniform information both in the upper and lower. After that, you check a CR, patient's oral condition. You compare the oral condition and the scan result. You need to check whether the CR has been accurately recorded. ID Yeonjishi. I use the articulating paper first and take bite registration and then I register bite using scanner. Number 23, 24 and 25 are implants and there is mobility in numbers 26 and 27. How do you do scanning in this case? So if I just scan the opposing arch and anterior area, there's a lot of adjustment necessary. This is also a very important question. When we scan, the oral cavity, the patient's mouth is open, so the tooth with mobility is slightly up. If the patient bites, the tooth will be pressed upon. So the scan and bite will be different. You need to scan properly. When you scan the lateral bite, I don't scan the tooth with mobility. You talked about the implant. You need to scan stable area with no vertical movement. In areas with mobility, you should not scan. Thank you for the wonderful questions. Smile again. I love the live prosthetics on Friday program. Professor Cho Yuna, Professor Park ji I look forward to your lecture. TS for facial scan. Do I need a separate device like ray scanner? Can I use a 3D image gained from tough function of iPhone camera? Ray scanner, you can get them in the market these days. This is another important question. When I first attempted facial scans, I used depth camera in iPhone. 
the images you get with these kind of devices. The resolution of 3D data is a little bit low, but you add the image and you can get nice results. You can get beautiful results. iPhone is good, but you need to have the patient bite on the bite scan jig, or else there can be distortions on the tooth. You need to take images of patients with both bite jig on and off. The scanning process, as mentioned, can be a bit cumbersome and you need to align them, so it's a bit of an issue, but otherwise it's a really good scanner. In the case of Ray Scanner, the front teeth is exposed and scanning is done like this. Bite jig is unnecessary to align the scan data, so you get good scans even without the bite jig, yes. Within the clinic, if you want to be able to do things quickly, using Ray Scanner can be a good option. Then all I love. I always experience difficulty in scanning, especially when there is mobile teeth. I find the occlusion very unstable. Is there a tip? I think this has already been addressed. There are many questions raised by DM6202 and Lee74NEN, but these will be addressed after your lecture. Dear viewers, thank you for leaving your questions and leaving comments of encouragements. I look forward to seeing even more questions and will repay you in the form of coffee coupons. I think if you have such an environment, it will be really great. The patient will listen in really attentively. Let me show you a clinical case how I utilize these technologies. In the case of this patient, the patient went through a car accident. TMJ was fractured and it was healed. However, there was disclusion in terms of occlusion. If you look at the molar number seven and seven, there's disclusion on the mesial side. As TMJ was fixed, muscular atrophy resulted leading to this kind of result. Occlusion needed to be lowered. I wanted to analyze how much reduction was required in the virtual articulator. As mentioned, there is a collision mechanism. Once a certain tooth has contact, it does not progress any further. In an arbitrary manner, I removed the teeth. The articulator goes down to negative up to the point where there's contact on the canine, I checked how many millimeters it went down. I also checked how much reduction was required for which tooth. Such analysis is one of the benefits you get with digital dentistry. Teeth were aligned in that state, and then I came up with blueprints for treatment. Second is a case where full mouth restoration was provided using jaw motion information for a patient with a severe attrition. There was a lot of attrition on prosthesis. Occlusal analysis was done. The difficult point about this patient is that it's not just a simple full mouth case. If you look at upper and lower, the patient has been using implants for over 15 years. I want to talk about how I provided full mouth prosthesis as I overcame this point. Occlusion was increased by 3 millimeters, and I want to talk about how I did this. Diagnosis was done. Provision was made, a bridge was cut and prepped. The prepped form 
is unanticipated at the time of diagnostic wax up. I use a eggshell provisional. You need to get the right position when this is placed in oral cavity to be able to transfer the information I want to talk about to how I did it. Positioning jig was used. I recorded the mandibular movement and jaw motion, and this was reflected on the final prosthesis. In order to do face bow transfer in the upper and lower, putty was used and records were made. The upper and lower positions have been recorded. After that, on the left and right, I record the position of the ear. On the articulator, the information data is set. Lower jaw movement is recorded. Anteroposterior movement is recorded. What is important is that before you have the patient to wear the huge appliance, you need to prepare the patient because once the patient wears this, he or she may feel nervous. Anteroposterior movement, opening and closing of mouth, and excursive movements, you need to prepare your patient of this before you put on this appliance in order to get natural movements. Different movements are recorded. Opening and closing mouth. I have the patient practice so that I can get the bite the patient normally does. CR mounting is very important. The patient's movement is recorded as shown. Professor Kim Jong-un and the Yonsei team have done this research. According to their research, the position of TMJ when the patient is comfortably opening and closing mouth is very important. Such movements have been recorded, open and close. In designing prosthesis, as I proceed with analysis, the height and position are determined in an arbitrary manner. I determined the ideal position and space for the prosthesis. This is a very important prosthodontic step. The occlusal distance was determined to be 3.2 mm. I decided to increase occlusion and teeth alignment is done for treatment. As you can see, it is in two stages. We call this teeth alignment. Diagnostic wax up is done first. CAD process is used. Teeth alignment is done one by one. Once this is done, you can complete the diagnostic wax up process. As shown below, when you do the diagnostic design, I use the virtual articulator mode. I do not use the patient's movements. I only use opening and closing. The condyle angle and Bennett angle is set on the virtual articulator. The provisional teeth, eggshell, is prepped, but it's very loose and it's difficult to get the right position. To do positioning, jig is used to position provisional and relining is done so that provisional is placed in the planned position. Primary provisional is provided. A lot of time was taken for this because implants were removed and metal cylinder were placed. It took longer than anticipated. However, with time we were able to get this occlusion. The important step here is in the next visit I need to check occlusion. I prepped and took impression using provisional. I had the patient to do mandibular movements. Oral scan data was utilized for final prosthesis. 
silicone impression was taken, pickup impression was done. 그래서 제가 이렇게 저희가 어떻게 했냐면은 이제 어 고강 스캔 데이터로 이제 최종 보통이 한게 아니고 이제 실리콘 인상을 떴습니다. 아까 픽업 인상을 떴는 거 보이셨죠? 그 모델을 가지고 이제 최종 보충을 하는데 but for byte digital technology was used the byte of provisional and i removed the teeth one by one and checked the byte on the oral scanner with oral scanner i got this byte and i merged the stone model here 스톤 모델을 중첩시켜서 이렇게 어 디지털로 얻은 바이트에다가 this was added to the byte it was merged as shown. This is the final result. The mandibular movement was reflected. The patient came in multiple times. This is an important step as well. I asked the patient to come in several times. First, if you give steep anterior guidance inclination, the teeth would come out. I would reduce the amount of anterior guidance and check whether it moves stably within the patient's mouth. After that, secondary provisional is provided. Interior guidance is now ideal, and this is now transferred to final prosthesis. Double scan technique is used for this. The prosthesis used right before final prosthesis is replicated. The patient was very satisfied. When doing digital dentistry, there are several checkpoints that we need to be aware of, as mentioned. In the case of full mouth cases or partial quadrant cases, you can use these kinds of devices. When providing implanted treatment, you can use these kind of appliances. This is called Nesometer. CR byte can be registered. This is a denture case. Occlusion was registered. I'm going to show you how I provide treatment in denture cases. This is how I take impression. I use cutback tray to take impression with the patient's mouth closed. Bite is taken like this. This kind of appliance is used. This appliance is like a face bow. The angle is checked as the patient bites on it. I check a campus line and interpapillary line, and I use centric tray to register the bite of upper and lower. And on top of it, there's the face bow. On CAD software, there's this program. Using this, you can design a customized tray for the patient. And impression tray for when the patient is closing his or her mouth is made. Gothic arch tracing appliance. This is used to get a CR guide bite. As you can see, the Gothic arch is the easiest way for beginners to take a CR bite. It's a very stable way to take a bite. Facial scan is taken. Facial scan data is used to align denture. On the virtual articulator, you can check the position. Digital denture is being fabricated here. As you can see, campus line and the horizontal interpapillary line and midline lip support of the patient can be reviewed as you fabricate denture. You can check within patient's oral cavity and whether it looks nice. Retention and occlusion and phonetics can be checked. If the patient is satisfied, you can provide a final prosthesis. This is something that we are studying at the university. You put the metal framework on the denture and then it is fabricated. 
With the metal framework, the material is milled. You can make a milled denture like this. The patient was very satisfied. In fully edentulous patients, you can use gothic arch tracing and other special devices to provide the treatment more easily. To give you my conclusion, in order to figure out the patient's different circumstances, I think it is important to integrate digital data. You can utilize a facial scan and a mandibular movement. Using these information, you can uh, replicate it in the CAD software, and it's very important to utilize this. This is Professor Norman from Zurich University who has first developed the CEREC. Thanks to Professor Norman's hard effort, we are now able to utilize digital dentistry in fun ways. I would like to end my lecture by expressing my gratitude to them. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. There are lots of comments made on the real-time chat screen. Let's look at the questions raised by the viewers. There are questions that were not addressed earlier. When doing scanning, is it better to have more scan cuts or is it better to reduce the number of cuts by scanning very precisely and quickly? I think the person already knows the answer. If the number of cuts increase, it takes time to recomposition it and the computer may put together wrong things, therefore values may be distorted. Doing it precisely and swiftly is important. If you turn the switch on and off, it takes a lot of time. My tip for you is to do it swiftly and to switch the scanner position drastically to get a more effective position. The scanner turns off if you take it out of the mouth, so by moving the scanner to effective positions without taking it out, you'll be able to get good scans. Using scanner in right time and moment is very important. Is it better to move the scanner with an oral cavity? Yes, to get a more natural scan. Because it turns off when you take it out, yes. If you get confounded with an oral cavity and if you rotate it unnecessarily, that's not good, but you need to move it to the effective position. You can perhaps scan the buccal side and then move like this to shift the positions to the lingual side. Kim's. In the case where there's a restorations like gold crown, if you use oral scanner, scanning cannot be done properly and the bite cannot be properly registered. Do you have a tip? It's the same with all metal, right? Yes. Because of scattering, scanning can be distorted. The light source is utilized for scanning and patterns are reflected. If scanning is impossible, the scan stops. If you take a photo in a dark places, the noise and scattering occurs. In order to prevent that, this is slightly different from the question before. If there is a metal restoration, there are white dots and scan is not done. In this case, if you shift the scanner slightly, perhaps a bit more lingually or a bit more buckly, you can tilt it and scan it in different angles to minimize the scattering. Even if there is gold crown, you do not need to shrink away from it, just to shift the scanner slightly to get scans from different angles to avoid scattering as well. Scanners have developed significantly. Now everything is possible these days. These days, even if you scan gold crown, gold crowns are scanned pretty nicely. In the past, it was very difficult. You had to spray some sprays. 
QGO2. If you look at studies comparing T-scan and oral scan, there are many studies that report oral scanner as comparatively inaccurate. What do you think on that? T-scans and oral scanners, they serve different purposes. Yes, T-scan is for bite. Rather than the natural CO bite, with T-scan, pressure is applied in occlusion, so it's slightly different. Therefore, even if you get T-scan separately, it's difficult to make prosthesis with it. This is for after prosthesis completion when you adjust occlusion. Oral scan needs to be taken very accurately. That's my belief. Distortion-free is important and the lateral bite scan needs to be taken properly. You may think it's all very difficult, but if you can do the scanning properly and simply from the occlusal table, I always see a lot of CO stops. So this is a very good bite. That's the kind of scan that I get. I think ability to do oral scanning is more important. I think the question is about sensitivity of occlusion. Next to cool all, there are multiple teeth missing in the upper and lower posterior area with distal extension. If the interarch distance is wider than the scope of the scanner, then the accuracy of bite scan goes down. What do you do in this case? With distal extension, the posterior teeth are missing and interarch distance is wide. It's a difficult question. I've thought long and hard on this issue as well. I think this is a near edentulous case. A patient with only a few anterior teeth left. In this case, I do not take a bite of the residual teeth. My principle is to scan full arch, both on the left and right. I get information with eight teeth on left and right and upper and lower, but at times uh, this is not possible. Like using the wax rim, I use a well-fitting temporary provisional. I scan that and get help from that. So you do not proceed just as is, but you use the provisional denture to get bite and movement. Lee 74NEN, in determining the height of restoration, what are the conditions that needs to be considered? I don't think arbitrary setting is appropriate. Do you consider analog method using the different measurements? It's a very good question. It's a good quality question. Using the analog ways, using the measurements, they're very effective, but it's very difficult to get it. Drawing a line between the canines and registering them on the wax frame. The, there are such ways. When you register bite, you can add a straw to find the right balance. But these days, I primarily use the facial scan with oral scan. I reproduce the patient's face, so these analog ways are not imperative. Using oral scanning could be good. In determining the height of restoration, you need to secure the space for the restoration. If you can do the tracking, I ask the patient to open and close mouth when the registering motion with oral scanner. Using tracking device tracker to register the jaw movement in line with the path, I make a restoration.
딱 들어갈 수 있는 스페이스를 만드는 그 높이를 딱 갖고 가는 어, 예, 그거를 좀 보고 싶습니다. 네. 자, 최고... Personal Dicks on Friday is the best. Good dentist. In the case of fully dentulous patient with implants, do you use a wax rim to get VD and do scanning? So there are multiple ways. First, you take impression of the upper and lower. For fully dentulous patient, I don't do scanning a lot. I use border molding. The analog way, there is a centric tray. This is a special tray. If you use putty in the upper and lower, the upper and lower position is registered. Using this method, VD is checked in fully dentulous patients. If you do it, the patients feel quite nervous, so at times the VD is reflected lower than normal. The patient may put more pressure on it. Centric tray is used to take putty, and a regular body is used to compensate for possible deviations. Second, customized impression tray is made for when the patient closes his or her mouth, and then I check once again with nasometer. If you register once again, the vertical dimension will be registered correctly. Hari prosthodontic, so while taking impression of fully edentulous patients does not seem as daunting now. Good dentist, do you do additional occlusal adjustment when uh, placing the actual prosthesis? Do you, I think the question is about whether you do a lot of adjustment after using digital dentistry. That's why I register motion using oral scanner like TRIOS. Upon adapting the prosthesis, if it requires a lot of adjustment, you feel devastated. I experienced this a lot in the early days. This is because the CO occlusion has not been registered properly. You need to scan the upper and lower well without distortion and register bite. You need to check the occlusal contact on the computer. You need to check the anterior bite and see that has been well reflected in the software. You need to check it in patient's oral cavity as well. You need to check whether the occlusion has been well reflected. If the CO occlusion is right, if CO was distorted, the motion registered, you cannot use that. You need to check whether CO is well reflected and then move on to registering motion. With experience, 70% of the time, we do not require occlusal adjustment. I do not rely 100% on digital dentistry either. Most people just use a scanning. You either design it or you send the data to the lab where digital dentistry is done. Two out of three cases, it does not require occlusal adjustment at all. All you have to do is do cementation. At times, even if the same person does the scanning, it requires a lot of occlusal adjustment. One out of three times, even though the same person does the scanning, such issues can occur. What is the reason? If you have confirmed that all clinical steps have been done right, then it's the matter with the equipment. Calibration of milling machine is very important. Milling the disc, the top side and bottom side, there can be a lot of error. And if the burr has not been grinded properly, such error can occur. First, you need to check the scan data. If there's nothing wrong with it, you need to check whether the calibration has been done well with the device. If you're using the lab, you need to send such information to the lab.
Hari Prasad on Tixa, digital occlusion is really amazing. What do you think uh, the future of digital dentistry is going to be like? Could you give a word of advice on what the future is going to be like? I think ultimately we all would need to use digital dentistry. The process that I've shown you, I think in the future such practice will be done routinely by everyone. This process does not take long. Going back and forth to design center, it doesn't take long. You can do it immediately at the treatment room. To make it possible, AI will need to be utilized. I think this will be possible in the foreseeable future. Currently, about one third of the dentists have scanners. There are so many. I think in five or 10 years, everyone will have scanners. Considering how tedious it is to take impression, I think it will be advantageous if everyone uses digital dentistry. Here go to, upon oral scanning, after rendering bite can be distorted on the CAD program. Do you have such experience? There are two reasons for this. As I mentioned earlier, there's the option where the computer makes calculation and finds the optimum occlusion. If you use this function, then it is automatically deformed. So I always turn this function off. Perhaps there may be something wrong with the scan data. Some data may be missing. In this case, there can be deformation in the rendering. Therefore, I always check the rendering result before the patient returns home. TS, scanning the temporary provisional which has gone through relining is not easy. Is there a scanning tip? I thought long and hard about this. A lot of relining is done. You cannot scan model scanner. You need to apply spray powder. However, if you use it, it's, it gets all clumpy and even if you use steam, the white bit remains. These days, denture which has gone through relining, I use oral scanner. I use oral scanner to replicate it. When you go from the front side to the back side, this is the same here. If it is tray rim, you should not just carelessly do it, but pay more attention to it. From the inner surface, from the rim to the outer surface, you need to go sideways carefully. If you use this kind of motion, oral scanner can be used for denture scan. For temporary provisional, which has gone through relining, I use oral scanner. Happy day. In the case you've shown me, when you use Gothic arch for fabricating the denture for upper and lower after checking CR, was the bite registered using digital means? I don't think I've shown this properly. If you use Gothic arch and check a CR, the bite is stabilized. After that, I use model scanner. Happy day. I think this is a question that follows the previous one. Compared with when taking a causal relation with a silicone bite material, is there any difference in terms of accuracy of occlusal relations when you use a digital dentistry? As I mentioned before, after you check a CR, I use a bite silicone material. I register bite. I use model scanner. This is the most accurate way, and that's the way we do it. I do not use oral scanner. As for denture fabrication, final custom tray for closed mouth is used to take impression. Model scanning is done. Bite scan is done at the same time. 
I use silicone bite for that process. If you use silicone bite, you can feel easy about accuracy. There were so many questions and Professor, you have provided such wonderful answers to all of them. Thank you, Professor, for that. I would like to thank all who have participated in the chat. Now we will choose the best question among all the questions raised in today's program. The person who has been chosen as the best question will be sent three Starbucks coupons. Professor, can you choose the best question? There were so many questions, so it's really difficult for me. I'll choose ID Hergo2, who have raised a lot of questions. We'll give the prize to Hergo2. I hope the other people don't feel too bad. Is there another person you'd like to give the prize to? Happy day. We're going to send one coffee coupon to Happy Day. ID Hergo 2, congratulations for being the winner. For those who have been chosen, Starbucks coffee coupon will be sent on Monday as a text message. At times, the people are not able to receive such coupons because they have not agreed to marketing. Please agree to marketing on dental site and get your gifts. If you don't know how to give your consent, please ask us and we'll be able to provide you guidance. Please do not feel so let down for not being selected as the best question. The chat event continues in the next lecture, so I look for your avid participation. Professor Park, is there a word of advice to those who have been with us raising questions and studying? Could you give a word of advice regarding digital dentistry? I've introduced a lot of digital dentistry today. Digital dentistry is not a one-size-fits-all solution. Many traditional prosthodontic techniques are required to be able to get accurate occlusion and to utilize digital dentistry well clinically. If you understand the basic principles that consist of good occlusion and utilize digital dentistry, I think it will be really meaningful in improving your treatment. Let's stick to the key principles. I think your message is in line with the understanding that even as we embrace the new, we need to respect the traditions. Thank you. I think Professor Park Jiman is really one of the most busiest people. Thank you for coming despite your busy schedule. Ladies and gentlemen, did you enjoy the prosthodontics on Friday with Professor Park Jiman? We were able to gain good tips on how to do bite registration using digital dentistry. As for the questions that were unanswered, these will be addressed via reply. In the next lecture, Dr. Kim Ki Song is going to talk about the clinical meaning of short implants. Thank you for watching and staying with us until late. Thank you.